Hi, Nick Fox again with BO Welding. In today's video, we're going to elaborate on some of the pad welding in different positions that I mentioned in a previous video. We're going to go over welding from left to right, right to left, near to far, far to near, and even with our non-dominant hand. We don't always pad weld with brand new rods like this one, 14 inches. We'll make the students weld with rod subs like these. These are left over from previous weld tests. We don't make the students use short rods on their weld test, but this is a ton of stub loss, and that's wasted material and cost. So there will be days where they only get to weld with these. Welding with these makes you a better welder. More starts and more stops help you blend them out and make you a better welder in the long run. All right, let's get into some pad welding. In 1G, or flat position, we start our students welding around 124 amps. We use a drag travel angle and a 90 degree work angle to help move the slag to the back of the weld puddle to help prevent slag entrapments. After students get the basics down, students weld in various sequences, progressions, and amperages so they can learn to read the puddle from different angles and sides to give them experience for welding they will encounter in the field. All right, now we've finished up with some flat pad welding, we're gonna move into the next position, horizontal. I have all the students lay their first bead for out of position welding in the flat position so they can work on it in the out of position. So here's a flat bead. We'll now take this plate to our fixtures in the booths, stick it in, tighten it up. We want to pick a height that is comfortable for our welder. This is all adjustable. You don't want it too low and you don't want it too high. So here's a comfortable horizontal position for me. We're going to work this the same as we do flat, left to right and right to left. We obviously can't work from top to bottom. We always build from the bottom up. For 2G, or horizontal, we keep a drag travel angle and a 5 to 10 degree work angle aimed uphill to prevent undercut and sagging of the weld pool. Horizontal allows for a faster travel speed so you don't get cold laps in your welds due to gravity. All right, that was a little horizontal pad welding. Uh, we're gonna switch to th th vertical, 3G. And before we do that, we're gonna pull our plate and take it right to the quench tank to cool this down. A plate that hasn't been quenched will give your rod more heat than it needs to weld and affect your welding. Again, not a good practice for a weld test on certain materials, but a, a good practice to weld more, more often. For vertical, we bump our amperages down to 110 for new welders. We recommend a 5 to 10 degree uphill push angle because any more than this gives you a long arc situation which adds unnecessary heat into your weld puddle causing saggy, humped up weld beads. We also recommend a slight weaving action to flatten out your weld profiles and prevent undercut in the toes of your welds. When welding overhead, 4G, we use similar settings to flat for amperages and rod angles. Students tend to want to turn their amperages down, but you need the higher amperages to be able to hold a tight arc length and get your weld puddle to burn in and flatten out without sticking your rod. All right, it was a hot and muggy day here in the shop doing some pad welding in all positions, flat, horizontal, vertical, and overhead. Um, hopefully it's helped some of you new welders with all the tips and tricks I've given. If you're a veteran welder and you agree or disagree with something I've said, please comment below. I'd love to hear some feedback on these videos. As you can see, Bowler is a great running rod. If you look at my pad welding, it came out really smooth for left-handed, right-handed, left to right, near to far, far to near. Lots of starts and stops using the stubs. Uh, my out of position horizontal, left-handed, right-handed came out pretty good. My left-handed vertical could use a little work. Got a big hump here where I had one start that was not great. And then the overhead came out really smooth. All right, if you like these videos, please like, share, and follow.